Johnny Dollar. So you've stayed on there in Miami. That's right. Good. And if I had any sense, I'd stick around in Florida the rest of the winter. Why not? Instead of going on back to the snow and cold of Connecticut, and who are you? This is Don. Don Boomhauer, Johnny. Don. Yes, sir. Right across the state from you, here in Sarasota. Well, Don, it's nice to hear from you. How did you know I was down here? From Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau. Uh Uh-oh. So I told him I'd try to catch up with you before you head up on north again. I think I will. What? Yes, sir, nor rain, nor sleet, nor snow, nor anything else shall keep this insurance investigator from heading home. Huh? What are you talking about? Getting away from here in one piece. What? Well, you're still holding down the office of Tri-State Life and Casualty, aren't you? Of course, and that's exactly why... Well, I love you dearly, Don. I've been paid a lot of nice, fat commissions by that company of yours. Exactly, and it's because of that very But the last two or three cases I've handled for you have been so risky, so dangerous, and so darned unprofitable. Johnny! No, please, Don, let me duck this one. But all I need is five minutes with you. Five minutes? That's right. Well, what kind of a case could I possibly cover in five minutes? None at all that I know of. Well, then? Did I say anything about taking on a case? Well, no. But I'll tell you this. Five minutes with me over here may very well keep me from getting involved in something pretty serious. Yeah, like what? Oh, like maybe spending a few years in a federal prison, something like that. Oh, now you're kidding. Am I? Well, aren't you? Come on now, Don. No, 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 you come on. Over here to Sarasota. For just five minutes with you, huh? Yes, Johnny. Well, I still think you're kidding. No, Johnny. But okay, Don, I'll see you. I'm sure it's a gag. Has to be. And yet... Coming from Don Boomhauer. CBS Radio brings you Bob Reddick in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-State Life and Casualty Insurance Company office in Sarasota, Florida. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the big date matter. (laughs) Expense account item one, 2020, plane fare, tips and taxi. In a little over an hour from the time I left Miami, I was in Sarasota talking to Don Boomhauer in his office near the foot of Main Street. Sure, Johnny, simply because I asked you to. Wrong, Don. Only reason I agreed to come on over here on my way back to Hartford is because it means a little more time away from the snow up there. Yeah, Florida's pretty nice this time of the year, isn't it? Handle a jewelry store robbery there in Miami, huh? Yes, and almost got my head shot off, which is why I'd like to be able to relax for a while. But now... What is this case you seem to think I can solve in five minutes for you? I told you I have no case for you. Yes, I guess you did. All I want you to do is to check over some, uh, some of these figures for me. Uh, Don, you know the only kind of figures that I give a hang about? I know, I know. The ones on Pretty Girl. <laughs> well, why not? After all, just because you're a staid old married man... Don't and... knock it, Johnny. How is Francis, by the way? <laughs> fine, just fine. You give him my best. Huh? Oh, do it yourself. I told her that if I could persuade you to come here at all, I was sure I could get you to stick around for a few days. How about it? We'll see. Now, about those figures you mentioned. Oh, yeah. Uh, Johnny, have you kept any account of the monies we've paid you this past year in commissions? I can tell you down to the last penny. Good, because if it agrees with these figures here, all you have to do is sign this statement and the Bureau of Internal Revenue will quit threatening to send me up the river. So that's what the big emergency is. Yeah. One of my part-time clerks balled up some of the paid-out items a couple of months ago, and the tax man just wants proof that we actually gave you this money. So if this figure agrees with yours... And it does. Good, good. Well, then take this pen, affix your lawful legal signature, and try for once to make it legible. Sure. Under the desk, Johnny. Those shots are right outside in the street. You're telling me? Move over, so I... Hey. What? Shots, did you say? What's the matter with you? Can't you hear them? Well, just take a good look out there. Come on, let's go and Can see. Can our heads blown? 
Hey, what the dickens? Sure, it's that car out there with a the pretty little blonde sitting in it, backfiring. Son of a gun, you're right. Yeah, but I guess we're not the only ones who thought they were shots. So you mean that mob that's gathering? Yes. Uh, looks like half the town has come to see what it's all about. Hey, I hope they don't lean against my plate glass window and break it in. Look at that crowd. Poor gal. Yeah, pretty too, isn't she? Yes, come on, I'll see if I can give her a hand. Come on, Don. Oh, why not? Now, I, I don't think I know her, Johnny. Well, that's too bad. But she might do anyway. I do? For what? As a date for you. What else? A date? Sure. That wingding that Francis and I are taking you to out at the yacht club on Bird Key tonight. Oh? Sure. She is kind of cute looking, isn't she? Uh-huh. Nice looking car, too. Brand new. And after all, you're going to need some transportation. Well, come on, I'll see if I can find out what's wrong with that bus of hers. <laughs> sure, Johnny. You go right ahead. Okay, I will. And purely incidentally, find out if she has a nice evening dress she'd like to show off tonight. Sure, why not? <laughs> A number of years ago, it was said that, in spite of the large population of this planet, men and women remain the most inaccessible things on it. Today, we see this lack of understanding among peoples of the world reflected in headline stories. But it isn't because the people of the world are enemies. All people want to be friends. Long before the termination of World War II, Reverend Eugene Wood, a Methodist minister from Oceanside, California, went into a Scottsdale, Arizona camp where German prisoners of war were interned and offered his services to the imprisoned men. Among other things, Reverend Wood taught the men English and he taught them about the United States of America. During the following years, after the men had been repatriated to their native Germany, nearly half of the internees corresponded frequently with Reverend Wood. Those men expressed a unique understanding of the people and the country of the United States of America. This great feeling of friendship and understanding prompted the minister to make a pilgrimage to Europe to seek out the men he had befriended in the prisoner of war camp in Arizona. This gesture on Reverend Wood's part gained him a fantastic welcome everywhere he went. In all the places he visited, he spread the gospel of love and friendship and had it returned to him. There were no enemies, only men with the love of freedom, the right of all men. By the time I got outside the door of Don Boomhauer's office, it looked as though half the town was gathered there. By the time I got to the car where the cute little blonde gal was fighting the ignition switch to cut the engine, stop it from backfiring, three quarters of the town was present, including the merchants and customers from all the stores and cafes and hotels there on Main Street. The folks had come to see the fun and, of course, offer all kinds of unhelpful suggestions. Well, don't just stand there, please. Can't you help me get this thing stopped? Well, can't you turn off that switch? I mean, the ignition key? No, and I've already broken two fingernails trying Well, to. all right, then. Pull the release for the hood. The what? Under the dash, there to the left of the steering post. You see it? Oh, this? This little handle? That's it. Give it a pull so oh. I can go around to the front and raise the hood. Oh, now, what good will that do? Oh, that awful no. Well, if I get the hood open, I can pull a wire off the distributor and stop the engine. Distributor? What's the distributor? Just pull on that little handle. Uh, this one? That one. Oh, Go ahead, pull it. Right. I, 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 I am. Okay, now if I can get the hood open, I... Oh. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, and I surely would appreciate it. All right, here now. Now, what the oh. Sam Hill? Don't tell me this thing is oh, stuck to. Hey, now, do you mind telling me what's the big idea around here? Officer. That's right. What do you all think you're trying to do around here? What's the matter with you, anyhow? Now, look, help me get this hood open. It's stuck. You mean it isn't noisy enough for you as it is? All right. Okay, fair enough. I'll yes, take sergeant. care of this, man. You and the boys get the crowd moving along. Okay, sergeant. Now, you look here, buddy. Look, will oh. you help me get this hood open so we can stop the engine? Stop the engine? Yes, yeah, sure. Now, come on. Well, you crazy or something, all you have to do is get that gal of yours in there behind the wheel to turn off the switch. I have been trying to. I told you, officer, that's just the trouble. You told me nothing. Now, look, here. No, Sergeant. Well, that is the, the ignition switch is stuck. And I tell you, if you all don't cut out this here noise, bust off some of those wires or something. Now, listen, listen. listen. Right listen. this minute, I'm going to haul you in the car and this gal friend of yours off to the... Off to... Oh, oh. Yes, yes, it's stopped. Well, that's that. Oh, it is, huh? Young lady, 
You get this car out of here and over to some repair shop before this happens again. You hear me now? Oh, yes, sir. I certainly will. Oh, well, now, wait, miss. I don't miss. know what you did to stop it from making that awful oh, noise. Oh, nothing. Absolutely nothing. And but also, now, I'm I... I'm uh... terribly upset about it happening right here on the main street. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Just get it out of here. Uh-huh. Vanna, yeah. clear this crowd off the street. Right, Thanks Sergeant. Awfully. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, maybe I'd better go along with you to make sure it doesn't do it again, oh, huh? Oh, no, it runs fine now, but thanks anyway. Hey, did I tell you to get this thing out of here? Uh, yes, sir, right away, officer. Oh, no, wait, wait, please. Wait, nothing. You go on, miss. Yes, sir. Bye. Uh, look, look, look listen, listen, I want to, I just want, miss, miss. The only thing you want to do is keep out of jail. Officer. The idea of letting that thing backfire out here on Main Street. What do you think I had anything to do with it? If I had any sense, I'd lock you up right now. Oh, now, wait a minute, officer. Go on, get on your way. I don't know who you are, and the only way I'm going to find out is by putting your name on the blotter at headquarters for disturbing the peace. What? And I'm going to do just that unless you make yourself mighty scarce around here in a hurry. Now, go on. Oh, now, look here, will you? Don't bother me. Fan, I yes, guess I can all go on back to your regular beat again. Okay, Sergeant. All right, you men. Well, I guess go back to that's your that. Now. Scott O'Connor, we'll just... Okay. Well, it doesn't look as though you did too well, Johnny. Well, I didn't really have a chance to talk to her. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, it is. Because she's a living doll, all right. Are you sure you don't know who she is, Don? No, nope, sorry. But don't worry, Johnny. I'll round you up some kind of a date for the affair at the club. Now, let's see. Maybe Bill Hall knows somebody nicer. Forster Harm. Or... What's the matter? Hmm? I said, what's the matter? Oh, um... Nothing. Nothing. I, um... I was just thinking. Oh. And I'll bet she dances like a dream. I wonder what her name is. No, we'll never know, I'm afraid. Now, don't bank on that. But now, if you'll just sign this statement that you came over here to sign... Oh, sure. sure. Here, here. Here, use this pen. All right. There you are. <laughs> Legible, too. Now, I'll call Frances and tell her that you're staying over with us. If only I'd notice the license on her car. Then I'll see what charming, good-looking girl around this town is available. But I doubt if even the police And did. would like the famous Johnny Dollar for a date tonight. Obviously, that one cop didn't know her. Huh? I'd hardly dare to ask him anyway. Johnny. Which means that probably none of the other police who were there would be of any help either. What are you talking about? That girl, my date for tonight. Oh, now, Johnny, I was only kidding about her. Well, I'm not. But you don't even know her. I will. And chances are that if, if you should find her and proposition her for a date, you'd get your handsome face slapped. I'll risk it. Yeah? What if she turns out to be somebody's wife? No wedding ring. Oh, you did notice that. I noticed that, among other things. But how are you going to find her? Well, if she's still here in Sarasota, if she lives here... Oh, now, Johnny, this is all a little... Okay, okay, go ahead and find her. How? Well, I have an idea. Yeah? What? May I borrow your car for a little while? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, help yourself. Okay. When do I see you again? Well, just give me a little time. All you want. Up until dinner time when you'll have to pick me up here. Now what? Yes, I see. Stopping at that jewelry store across the street. Here comes another prowl car from the other end of the... Uh-oh, Johnny. Yeah, I see him. Same policeman you were arguing with a few minutes ago. Only why is he coming in here? I'm sure I don't know. Officer? All right now, Buster. What? Just put up your hands so I can slip these cuffs on you. Sorry, Mr. Boomer. What are you talking about? You think I don't know now what you all were up to out there, you and that gal? What? Creating all that disturbance out in the street with that backfiring car. Now, officer... So as to draw the crowd, so as your confederate could have a clear field to rob that jewelry store across the street. Put out your hands, sir. Oh, now, hold everything. That up. store was robbed while the mob was gathered around the car? Thanks to this man's diversionary tactics, somebody walked out with must have been sixty or $70,000 worth of watches and pins and rings and everything. So they called us up. I wrote the insurance on that store. Now, if you don't want to come along peaceful, oh, mister... Oh, now, whoa, now. Yeah? Yes, officer, wait. What's that, Mr. Boomer? Well, don't you know this man? This is Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar? That's right. 
Y'all mean that, that freelance insurer? Well, you, you, you mean the friend of the lieutenant that comes down here now and then to... It, this is Johnny Dollar? Here, officer. My credentials. I've known him for years, officer. He, he's Johnny Dollar, all right. Yeah, and these papers all look... Yeah, but if he was out there by that car... So, Don, you insured that store, huh? Does that mean I'm on expense account as of now? As of now. Yeah, well, now... Fine, uh... fine. And as long as I have the keys to your car... Well, I'll see you later. Yeah, hey, now, you wait a minute, mister. Yeah? Unless I can get Lieutenant Phillips to identify you. Oh, he'll be glad to, I'm sure. Yeah, now, you all wait. You're the only suspect I got. Oh, no, you haven't. By the time the officer had recovered his wits enough to barge out the door after me... I'd raced around to the back of his office and taken off in Don Boomhauer's car. Stop number one was the car agency that sold the same make the gorgeous blonde had been driving, that backfired there on Main Street. No, they hadn't seen either her or the car in the repair shop. Well, anyhow, one of our nice new models kick up and backfire like that? No, sir. Then I made the rounds of every car agency in town. Nothing. All right, that clinched it for me. I mean, the reason for that car acting up as it had. But how to find it, if, that is, it was still in Sarasota. I drove aimlessly all over the place, hoping and praying that somehow I'd just happen to spot it. Yes, and hoping that Don Boomhauer had been able to explain things so the police wouldn't track me down and cramp my style. I racked my brain for some idea, some idea how to find that girl and her car. And I guess the strain on my so-called brain made me a little foolish. For I suddenly found that I'd driven way out of town, way out on Bee Ridge Road. I started ahead into a little side road on the edge of the swamp to turn around, and then... Well, don't tell me there isn't luck in solving these cases. Stalled there a couple of hundred yards up that dirt road was the car I'd been looking for. And standing beside it, waving for somebody to stop and help her, was the luscious little blonde. goodness, somebody came along to help me get this old car started. Well, hi there. Why, it's you, the nice man who tried to help me back in town. None other. Well, you're certainly my good Samaritan today. Now, what seems to be the trouble? I don't know. It just stopped. And neither one of... I, 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 I don't know a thing about cars except how to drive them. Well, maybe I should have gone along with you after that trouble back in town. Huh? Well, somebody who knows something about these things should have... Well, this time I see you got the hood released to work. Uh, yes, I, I just pulled out that little old handle and it popped open. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, let's see. Just, um, how did you happen to be coming out this way? Well, maybe I was out looking for you. Oh, why? Well, when I first saw you there in town, I thought maybe I'd ask you for a date tonight. <laughs> and don't hand me a crack in the face for saying it. Why should I? Well, thanks. You're cute. What's your name? Johnny. Johnny Dollar. You're... Well, that's a funny name. Uh, gee, Johnny, I, I hope you can get this running again for me. Well, I'll take a look. Uh-huh. So I took a look, with one eye watching her. But she didn't make a move, just stood there smiling. I replaced the ignition cable that had jogged loose. And then I saw it. That simple little device that meant this car had been rigged for backfire deliberately. Just like the old Chicago mobsters did it in order to cover the sound of gunshots. And then, then I thought I heard a noise inside the car. Somebody hidden behind the front seat, maybe? When I walked around and opened the back door, I see. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Johnny Dollar. You see a 38, and it's aimed straight at your belly. Sh shall I pick up a rock and slug him, Jim? Well, just relax, son. And that sack in there full of the loot from the jewelry store? What else? Did he fix the car, Sal? Yeah, I think so, Jim. Oh, it's fixed, all right. So if you two would like to continue on your merry way... Sure. Sure, after I take care of you and sink you in that car of yours in the swamp... Go ahead, Jim, and let's get out of here. Yeah, huh? yeah, sure. Turn around, Dollar. Okay, now, Jim, listen. Turn around. So I can be nice to you. 
give it to you in the back of the head so you won't know when it hits you. Oh, no, 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 wait, Jimmy, look. What? Look, th th that car that's coming. Well, it looks like they followed me after all. It's a fall car. The cops? Uh-huh. Blast them, Jim. Come on, Too late, you. baby. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Hey, you okay, sir? Everything under control, Mr. Dollar? Sure, Sergeant. And I suppose I might have known you'd be tailing me. Yeah, well, yes, sir. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, thanks very much. Well, it's a pleasure, Mr. Dollar. And uh, now, uh, what about her? Johnny? Now, listen, Johnny. Well, you see, I kind of asked her for a date, officer. Oh, I guess he did. But well, how about if she has a date with you instead? Say, at headquarters... So, thanks to sheer luck and clean living, of course, I'll pick up a commission on the recovery of all that jewelry. Expense account total, only that 20 bucks or so for the extra plane ride. What a life. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. They say that clothes make the man. A smart-looking uniform can do even more. And oddly enough, military uniforms usually have been patterned after the civilian clothes of the day, with some pretty fancy additions, of course. The buckskin-clad rifleman soldier of 1775 was dressed the same as the frontier trapper. The naval seaman, the same as the merchant sailor. It wasn't until the new American government was able to get enough money scraped together that uniforms started to get fancy. But the uniforms weren't really uniform. The infantry had one color combination, and the artillery had another. Even most regiments were dressed differently. Some uniforms were blue and white. Some were red and white. And others were red, white, and blue. Oh, yes, it looked like a pretty patriotic army but each man also made an excellent target. It was more than a hundred years before it was decided that all the frills and colors, plumes and gold braid would make a better dress uniform than fighting clothes. As battle tactics and weapons changed, so did the uniforms. Today, the American fighting man has a greater chance of survival in a uniform that blends with nature and it's a uniform to be proud of for the great American heritage it represents. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Reddick, is written by Jack Johnstone. Produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Musical supervision by Ethel Huber. Heard in our cast were Madeline Sherwood as Sally, Robert Dryden as the sergeant, Carl Frank as Don Boomhauer, Larry Haynes as Jim, and Larry Robinson as the car dealer. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hanna speaking. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.